here and now, here we are, Ahmed of Palestine. Now, we've got some big problems to uh, deal with, and we have to find a way to defeat uh, the Zionist uh, machine, the Zionist regime, the Zionist genocide, and now the Zionist yep. Holocaust in Gaza. I'll, um, uh, Susan Abunama, who's a, a friend from, from a long time ago, she's now in Gaza reporting, and she just wrote an article that's just incredible, you know. It's, it's everything, everything is so bad there. And the pictures that I've seen of uh, emaciated people, it's incredible. Everyone is starving to death. This is <clears throat> something that is uh, not reported upon by the Western media. <clears throat> and, and also what I've noticed uh, that I found is that Egypt is collaborating with the Zionist regime, but they're planning to set up a, in effect, a prison in uh, Egyptian Rafa, they have the cement walls there, just like the apartheid wall that the Zionists have set up, you know, with the West Bank. Mm -hmm. And they're preparing an area in which it is planned that once, you know, the Zionist military occupies Rafa itself and the uh, 1.4 million refugees there, they're going to separate the men from their families. And they're going to imprison them in Egypt under Egyptian control. Because That's these are... These I guess are, that's the plan. That's the plan, you know. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> and because the the men are the uh, are, are the recruiting base, you know, for Hamas and for the resistance groups, you know. So if they don't take all the men away, they're going to all become, you know, resistance fighters for sure, right? You know. Mm, of course. <laughs> you know, is, if is there's the enough athlete. guns, you know, there will be a million, you know, fighters, you know, there. So they 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 want to ex expel the men, then. The families are left vulnerable, left defenseless. And what happened in Lebanon in 1982, which I researched and wrote as my first book while I was working at the Palestine Embassy in Ottawa, is that the fighters of the uh, Fatah, of uh, Not just Fatah, Arafat, all the Palestinian resistance All the group. fighters, all, all the resistance groups yeah, were exiled into Fatah. Tunisia. You know, after Beirut was occupied by the Zionist uh, uh, military of General Sharon. Okay, so mm -hmm. they made a deal sponsored by the United States of America that, you know, the fighters would go to Tunisia and uh, the and United States would guarantee areas, the security of the Palestinian refugees in Sabra Shatila and elsewhere. And they didn't do anything, you know. Of General not. Sharon, uh, you know, sponsored and the uh, phalangist, you know, fascist allies of, of the regime. And they went in there and they killed 3,000 Palestinians and over three days only silently with knives while being supervised by the Zionist military, by being observed by the Zionist military, and uh, not letting the Palestinians out of the refugee camps as well. The men yeah. were taken to a, uh, a, a football stadium, a stadium held there until they were killed as well. So, That's true. You know, the Sabra Shatila massacre 19, in September 1982. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, the number, the, the number, uh, actually, uh, some estimate went up to five thousand, uh, between three thousand and five thousand, uh, and about half of the population who been massacred, women, men, and children, who were unarmed, also Lebanese, uh, Shiite Lebanese, uh, uh, were living in Sabra and Shatila. So the the the. The total number goes between three thousand to five thousand. Uh, yeah, and that says gotta repeat itself if the Zionists are uh, to um, uh, go into Rafah, and uh, I think this will be another repeat of massacres of a large scale. Of course, it's not gonna be by knives or by light arms. It's gonna be by uh, from air and from uh, tanks and um, you know. The same story goes on, you know, um, Hamas or, or the resistance are using the women and children as uh, human shields. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, mm -hmm. of course, Egypt is on on, on board uh, by disallowing, actually, for the past five months, disallowing enough uh, aid to go through its gates to uh, Gaza. They're allowing token uh, 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 trucks like 10 20, 30, sometimes 90 trucks per day, mm. whereas the uh, minimum uh, need uh, for the Gaza Strip, 
people between 500 to 650 trucks per day. Hmm. So uh, you have a deficit, uh, actually. You need at least the first sh shot if you really want to revive the livelihood of people in Gaza. You need at least uh, 2,500 trucks as first shot yes. and at least 500 every day. Yes. So now, uh, yeah. That's what I wanted to mention, you know, that that's just, you know, five, six hundred trucks a day just to sustain the population. Never mind yeah, rebuilding I, anything. Yeah. 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 Sustain as already sustained, like they're already living. OK. And they don't need anything, but they need every day. So for the past five months, the the aid is trickle. It's just like uh, drops in uh, drops in a bucket uh, of, of real aid. So people yeah. actually, they are in a slow mo uh, mode of of starvation, mm -hmm. uh, and you're getting you're getting like now tens of children and elderly who are already uh, the vulnerable are dying from starvation. Mm -hmm. They're actually people are dying from starvation all mm -hmm. across uh, Gaza Strip, mostly in the northern part, which is uh, the siege is uh, is more uh, you know apparent by the Zionist mm -hmm. uh, fascist uh, troops. Yes, and the trucks that are being allowed into uh, Gaza, into Rafah, from the uh, Egyptian crossing, that's one thing. And of course, you know, there's even, you know, a satellite image of 500 uh, transport trucks waiting to cross over at the Rafah crossing that are not allowed to. Okay, and that's by Egypt. In the north, there's no trucks getting through at all because the Zionist fanatics have set up a blockade, a human blockade to stop any transports from going into Gaza in the Northern Crossing. I mean, you know, and one guy was carrying this flag, you know, this yellow flag with a frown on it. This is a symbol of the uh, Zionist fascist movement. Yeah, they are all Kahf fascists. Movement, the, the Kahanist uh, movement. Actually, they are representative. Uh, they're represented in the so-called Knesset by uh, Ben Gvir. Yeah. Uh, a group they called a uh, Jewish force. Yes, never mind the Knesset. They're in a cabinet. They control the cabinet. They are Absolutely. directing Netanyahu. They Absolutely. are the ones. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It is. There's uh, they four have of a, them. Yeah. They they have they have the the majority of the Knesset. They have sixty four seats out of one hundred twenty. Mm -hmm. That's the coalition of the Likud, uh, the uh, the the religious Zionist groups and uh, the opportunistic uh, Haredi groups and uh, like Agodat Israel mm -hmm. and uh, of course the fascist of uh, Smotrich and uh, Ben Gvir. So yes. we're talking about a real Nazi coalition uh, that yeah. targeting uh, their uh, targeting the people of Gaza and of course the West Bank as well but not as much as Gaza Strip. Yeah and even though, you know, like 90% of the Israeli Jewish population is supporting this genocidal campaign. Unbelievable. You know, they've been so indoctrinated that they're willing to go ahead with it. Even though they have a fatal flaw because they're, you know, uh, they don't have enough soldiers, you know, so they want to recruit, you know, the the uh, Haredim, you know, the, the Hasidim, you know, the religious Orthodox Jews, mm. some of whom are supporting the government, okay? Because yes. they get privileges, you know, they get subsidies, Absolutely. you know, for schools and this and that. They're basically, makes, they're parasites living off the state. That's what they are. Yes, they, they, they say that they are riding a Zionist donkey and the Zionist donkey is going to take them to wherever they want to go. OK, you know, this is what they say. They think that they are controlling the Zionists. And they don't, they're yeah. not actually Zionists themselves. They're non-Zionists, but they're supporting the Zionist government. They're supporting this Nazi government. Okay. They are, now, they are indeed, they are indeed an action and behaving. They are uh, Zionist Nazis, but they, they just say we're not Zionist just to lie to their own uh, constituency. People. Yeah. Exactly. Now, but they are their Zionists. own people. That's the problem because when the government comes after their own people to, force them into the military and send them into Gaza or into Lebanon, you know, they're not going to take that. Nope. They're going to refuse and they're yep. going to just, you know, they're going to throw that leadership into the Mediterranean Sea. And then that government can fall, you know, yep. if they try to impose conscription on the Orthodox. It, it, it will, I don't think it will happen. 
okay? Yeah. Uh, Netanyahu will not allow that. It's Gallant who is uh, pushing for that. Yeah. Gallant, most likely, he will be either silent, silent by uh, Netanyahu, or maybe even uh, uh, ejected out of the the Likud party. Mm-hmm. Uh, Netanyahu wants this coalition to stay, and uh, the coalition wants Netanyahu to stay. It's not one way; it's two way uh, love affair between Netanyahu and the fascists. Mm-hmm. Uh, back to the Zionist colonist squatters in Palestine, who is uh, they call the Israeli people. These are people who are being brainwashed. They are a, a part of a cult called uh, Zionism, mm. mainly based on um, paranoia, uh, fear, uh, violence, and um, to be benefit, be benefit, getting a benefit of being a squatter on Palestinian land. These people, they've been brainwashed since uh, childhood. So mm. for them, they become part of the cult. So to be a 90 or 91 percent, or is some people 61 percent, doesn't matter. The vast majority of those colonists, okay, they are uh, for uh, the uh, annihilation or the genocide uh, against the Palestinian people. And that feels so because this is how they believe. This is why they believe that everybody is out there to get them. The Palestinians are squatters on land of Israel then because they're fighting back, they should be either ejected or killed. Mm. This is how they believe. And we are actually, uh, on our hand, uh, a, a true fascist uh, uh, and actually more or less Nazis uh, group of people. They have become uh, Nazis. About, about yeah. five to six million of them. Uh, yeah. I'm sure uh, even in Nazi Germany, there was not this much... Germans are as Nazis as we have in so-called Israel. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and shows that lots of um, Germans who actually fought against the the, the Nazis uh, in the partisans, um, the communists, their uh, homosexuals, or you know, you name it, who were being deemed as not enough or not good Aryan to the yeah. Nazis. So anyway, yeah. so what we have here in our hands, a, a, a cult of people, uh, and these people, uh, they're not going to change unless they really feel the heat really coming down on them. And I do believe that no peace or, um, or uh, negotiation or uh, a project to bring about peace will change their mind. I think the only way to do make them change their mind is by by force, by resistance, and resistance only can sway those people to believe or think again that what they're doing is wrong. Mm. Um, there is another uh, dimension of resistance as well. You know, international isolation, a BDS campaign that is at a high level and an official yes. level, uh, including the United Nations General Assembly, which can expel. Israel or suspend Israel from the General Assembly. I don't even like to use its name, but anyway. Now, the legal justification for the Zionist state is very doubtful. You know, excellent presentation from the uh, lawyer at the International Court of Justice on behalf of the uh, Arab League, I believe it was. And he outlined, you know, the history of the legal definition of what Palestine is. Yes. Uh, starting from the League of Nations, in which there was a um, uh, a special mandate, you know, uh, given to the uh, to Britain to oversee Palestine on a temporary basis, with a provision for the development of a Palestine state in fulfillment right. of the Palestinian right of self determination. <laughs> Nobody has ever mentioned this before. I didn't even know about the League of Nations, you know, but, like provisions, you know, uh, its conditions, you know, for the mandate that was given to, uh, to the British, you know. I always thought it was just, you know, like any other colony of the British Empire, but no, it was very, very limited. And yet the British armed and supported the Zionists. They brought them into Palestine. Yes. It's not just, they were not there before. Yes, the and, and until the white to... paper in which they start to feel the heat, you know, from the uh, Arab nations, and then they pretended not Arab to support the Zionists. The Arab nations did not do anything. It was the Palestinian mm. revolt. 
Oh, yes, yeah, so Arab nations did not do anything. They were collaborating with the British. Uh -huh. So it's the Arab, the Palestinian Arab revolt of 1936 yeah. that prompted the white paper. Yeah. yeah go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. So, okay. So recognizing that Israel has no legal foundation uh, as a consequence of the British mandate, even though the British, you know, tried to hand over the mandate, you know, to the Zionists, not legal. There is another great uh, legal monstrosity which is being violated, you know, by the Zionist regime, even after that point, because in the General Assembly partition plan, yes. they allocated a certain territory, 52% of Palestine. 54% of the Zionists. Oh, 54%. Okay. Yes. And you know, in fulfillment of what? In fulfillment of the Jewish right to self-determination? But the Zionists had no right to speak on behalf of the Jewish people. They had no exactly. mandate. Exactly. No mandate whatsoever. They were just pretending that the Zionists were speaking for the Jewish people. Exactly. And how did they get themselves into that position? Because the real Jewish representatives of the Ashkenazim, as far as I know, was the Jewish Bund. The Jewish Socialist Bund, which was much more popular than the Zionists. And it was the Jewish Bund, you know, that provided the partisans which fought against the Nazis in, in the first place, even before the Red Army, while the yes. Zionists were running away. And while the Zionists were collaborating. Actually, they were collaborating with the... With the yes. In order to the, get the their members, they only to get their members into safety. That was it. That was all. They didn't care about the Jewish people. They were the cabos. They were the cabos of the Nazis. They were 70.1% of the, of the ghetto police, you know, that were collaborating with the Nazis. They were the Zionists. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, exactly. Yes. And, exactly. People should know this. Yes, but but you know the media, you know you know regular media will not talk about this. Even you of know the alternative not. media doesn't know anything about this, you know, because all those youngsters there, you know, they don't know, <laughs> they don't know from very much, you know, they only they only know recent you know history, you know, like as a as a journalist, but they haven't studied, and and if they did read, you know, the historians, you know, the new historians amongst the um, uh, 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 the, the Jewish people living in Palestine there. Uh, who talk about the Nakba and expose the Nakba, and they, and they got the information, of course, you know, from the Palestinian historians. They don't know uh, what, you know, the problem is, you know, with things, you know, on a legal level, you know, like the partition plan, for instance. So uh, what was recognized as a state, as a Zionist state by the United Nations General Assembly in 1948? What were the boundaries? They weren't specified even. So the only legal boundary available to the United Nations General Assembly is the partition plan, okay? So if they want to consider it to be legal, then they have to go back to the partition plan boundaries, which is half of 48. There's states. one more There's one more aspect is very important. And uh, I don't know why uh, the United Nations nor the other uh, political entities don't push or pressure to the United, uh, state, United Nations General Assembly that when... Uh, the Zionist entity, so-called Israel, was admitted into the United Nations. Uh, she has to agree to two conditions. Condition 181, a uh, uh, condition of fulfilling or fulfillment of two UN uh, resolution. Resolution 181, which issues the partition plan to fulfill the partition plan. That's number one. And uh, United, the UN uh, Resolution 194, which calls for the rehabilitation of the Palestinian refugees who've been ejected from their homeland uh, in 19, uh, during the Zionist ethnic cleansing to Palestine between 1947 to 1949. So yes. therefore, these two conditions has not been fulfilled. 75 years later, yeah. nobody in the United Nations not even the PLO, supposed to be our yeah. representative, ever called, nor those, uh, uh, you know, uh, hard-leading supporters of Palestinian uh, states, ever called the United Nations to uh, uh, pressure Israel to adhere to those uh, resolutions hmm. or get out. Yeah. It's very simple. It's been 75 years. We're not talking 75 days or 75 weeks or 75 yeah. Months is 75 years. You're yeah. talking about two and a half generations and yeah. still nothing fulfilled. Yeah. There's two, as you say, two legal bases on which Israel can be expelled from the United Nations General Assembly. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And then the next step, 
is for the General Assembly to overrule the Security Council, get rid of the Security Council, and set up a new okay, apparatus. Well, that's another, yeah. That's, that's, sure. a, that's a consequence. The Security Council you know? is just nothing but a, a, a ploy and a game in the hand of the the five permanent uh, members. And uh, sorry, this is like five thugs in the neighborhood who is ruling the entire neighborhood. Yeah. This is, has to change. We're, we're yeah. moving as humans and we're getting away from dictatorship and this is a dictatorship. Yes. And um, the uh, ex-colonies of the world, which are now a majority of the General Assembly, <laughs> <laughs> this is a big, you know, historic, you know, revolution that's happened since the end of the Second World War. The Third yes. World has taken over the world. And now they have to take over the United Nations as well. And they yeah. have to uh, expel the right of veto, you know, of the Western powers. Yeah. You know, like, what is this? You know, neo-colonialism? That's what it, it is, you know. It is. The former colonial powers still have the right of veto over the colonies that Absolutely. are no longer colonies? Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, like, how long can that last? You know, this is not yeah. going to uh, be allowed. Yeah. This is turning into an international intifada, international revolution to overthrow the Western power structure and their... Uh, mercenaries in the Zionist state, basically. This is what's happening right now, here and now. That's true. That's true. Exactly. That's, uh, there's one uh, uh, idea I would like to bring into uh, debunking the Zionist uh, myth or lies or accusations, uh, which is um, about that uh, all these people who've been murdered in Gaza because Hamas uh, uh, used them as uh, as uh, human shields. Hmm. Uh, I was reading uh, extensively about the international law and uh, international mm -hmm. human humanitarian law. It's very clearly stipulates that for the war warring factions. Okay, or warring warring uh, parties, they should not use uh, humans as shields. Nor, if you suspect there's a human uh, civilians in a targeted area, you are not allowed to shoot at that area, even if there is combatants from the other side. Mm -hmm. The other side will be uh, will be accused of using uh, combatants as human shield. Yet, you're not allowed. You cannot kill or target any civilian humans or property if you uh, suspect there is a human uh, who are not combatants. So what the Israelis or the Zionists and their apologists are doing at this moment, they're actually admitting, you know, violating human rights and mm. international human uh, international human rights uh, articles which you cannot target anybody who has a child or a, a civilian uh, within the perimeter of your mm -hmm. target. So mm -hmm. they're actually admitting it being, mm -hmm. you know, violating the human rights codes and international law. Actually, mm -hmm. they're admitting they are criminals. They mm -hmm. are actually international yes. criminals. Yeah, yeah. They think that they have a right to be criminals. I don't know. It's yes, incredible. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, no, they, think, mm -hmm. they think they have the right. They think they have the right to kill anybody just in order to get Hamas uh, fighter, okay? So and, it's okay to kill 500 children in yeah. order to get to one Hamas fighter, but that's illegal in according mm. to international law. It's yes. a blagant uh, uh, violation of international humanitarian laws. And mm. Israel, I don't like to call that fascist entity, will, I think, be found as guilty as charged. Yes, International Court of Justice has to come down with some sort of immediate uh, uh, re uh, conditions that Israel has to fulfill. Otherwise, uh, they, they're they in a position to recommend the expulsion of Israel from the General Assembly. You know, that's it. That's you all. Know, you know, like it's coming down even to Even Netanyahu last week, he said, we killed one civilian for each. The ratio, sorry, the ratio of civilians being killed is uh, to Hamas fighter is one to one. He's admitting it. He's just saying it like yeah. in front of everybody. He said, we killed civilians mm. in order mm. to get, uh, mm. you know, a, a, a fighter. Yes, which is illegal. And Absolutely. And in addition to that, what happened October the 7th is that in the kibbutzim, where the hostages were being held and where the Hamas fighters were hiding once the uh, Zionist military came in there, 
Yes. What did they do? Okay. They shelled them. They attacked right. them. They killed yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. They, they killed, killed their the. Own. They killed their own civilian population in order to kill a few Hamas fighters. This is another. This is another war crime: killing yes. civilians. Yes. To in order to get to a combatant. Yes. It's 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 very clear cut. And, uh, and it's also case. a violation of of the Jewish people. It's a violation of Jewish self-determination. In effect, they are demonstrating that they are violating Jewish self-determination because they're not there to protect Jewish people. No, no, no of course not. way. Of course not. No, no, no. They, they, they've killed many Jews. Uh, oh, well, during the Second, the Second World War, they were collaborators with the Nazis and the Nazis who killed millions yes. of oh, Jews. Yes, I wanted to mention, you know, like they abandoned the Jewish people to the Nazis for they the sake not of abandoned. they were actually proactive in in in, in targeting anti anti Zionist Jews to the Nazis in order to be collected and sent to the concentration camps. That's Ooh. what the Zionists did. Ooh. You know, actually, uh, I can't remember the book, but it's an a, an Israeli written book, historian about Ben Gurion was asked or said that there was some Bulgarian Jews or Hungarian Jews, I don't know where they're from, either Hungary or Bul Bulgaria, refusing to uh, come to Palestine. And instead, he, they, he was told that the Nazis might collect them and take them to con the concentration camp. He said with his hand, ah, who cares about who are anti-Zionist? The cows in the in in Eretz Israel or the land of Israel are mm. more important to me than mm. those anti-Zionist Jews. Yes, and I said this that about the going. children too. He said that about yeah. children too, Jewish children. You know, like forget about saving them to Britain. You know, like it's it's that's not you know what they're all about. They're into worshiping the state. You know, absolutely. And, and, and this is a violation of even of Judaism. You know, the prophet absolutely. Samuel even mentioned this, this. This is an old problem in Judaism. There's these different tendencies. You know, one tendency is the Samuel who said that, you know, the the Jewish people, which is supposed to be, you know, the name Israel. Israel is the name of the Jewish people, not the name of the state. Okay, Samuel said that the Jewish people should not be a nation like other nations. Should not have a king. Should not have a state. And then the people, you know, they wanted, you know, to have a king, you know, for some reason or yeah. another, or yeah, some yeah. part of the people, you know, wanted to have a king. And so, you know, like he he conceded, you know, like nominating Samuel, a, a worker's kid, you know, to be the king. And then King David came along, you know, who wasn't allowed to be to build the, even a temple, you know, because he had blood on his hands, you know, as it mm -hmm. was admitted. And it was stated as well that that the David, you know, conquered Jerusalem, which proves that Jerusalem existed before David came along. Oh, even though this claim that David founded Jerusalem, you know, it's not true. And the name Jerusalem comes after the Jebusites, you know, who were the yes. nation there before. You know, it's, you know, if you want to know, you know, if you don't want to know, you don't know. That's basically, you know, the way it goes. So, uh, you know, uh, Zionism does not represent Judaism. They do not represent, you know, self-determination for the Jewish people because they abandoned the Jewish people during the Holocaust. And they didn't even tell the Jewish people, you know, to to escape, you know, to run away or anything. They didn't care, you know. No. All they cared about was their own members, you know. And that was 60,000 Zionists, you know, in Germany out of a, a population, a Jewish population of a million. 60,000 out of a million, you know, like the Zionists, you know, were nothing. They were nothing yes. at that time, you know. That's right. And then the rest, you know, they just allowed, you know, to be sent off to Dachau, etc., you know. And then the other case in which they collaborated, you know, uh, with the Nazis was in Hungary with... Uh, 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 Eichmann, yeah, and they they got one thousand eight hundred and forty three Zionists, you know, out, you know, who paid their way, you know, to get out as well. <laughs> Zionists are businessmen, you know, like after all, and and uh, and and they let Eichmann, you know, send the rest, you know, seven hundred fifty thousand to Auschwitz, Treblinka. They wouldn't care. They don't care. They, they don't, don't care. care. They didn't care. They, they they collaborated with the Western governments especially Canada, United States, Australia, that uh, don't allow don't allow any Jewish ships coming to you during the Second World War to mm -hmm. go into this new land. You have to make it return back to go to, uh, to Palestine. That's mean was while the entire Pacific, I mean, sorry, the Atlantic was formed by uh, Nazi uh, ships who were just looking for the, anybody who smells like a Jew. 
And so they actually sending, they send thousands of Jews to concentration mm. camp or even death in the sea. Yes. And we know about- I verify that. It's called the SS San Luis. That boat was stopped from uh, unloading the Jewish refugees in Halifax, Canada. That's stopped right. from entering into the United States of America and stopped from going into Cuba as well. Okay. You know what so that, they you went know back. What... And even though they came from Germany, they went back, they, they unloaded in France. France was occupied and three quarters of those Jewish refugees were killed in death camps. You know what is so, it's so bizarre and sad and sickening at the same time that the, 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 the Zionist Nazis in Canada, they mm -hmm. forced the government of Canada to apologize to them about the oh. refusal of docking of that Jewish refugee and got the money from the government of Canada as repetition uh, uh, for that uh, mistake. Mm. So they collaborated by killing their own people, by mm. sending them. Then a few decades later, they told the government, oh, you did the wrong thing. You should apologize to us and pay uh, mm -hmm. compensation to us. This is <laughs> sickening. This yeah, is and it took us. And it took 70 years to ask for an apology as well. <laughs> you know, like no, I didn't no, think no, of I, it, you know, before. Yeah, I know, I know, but still, it's uh, how dare you? How dare yeah. you? You kill, like we said in Arabic, you know, you kill a person, then you you go walk in his funeral. That's what they did. They oh, yeah. killed that those people and they said, yeah. Oh, they cried the crocodile uh, tears. Tears, yeah, 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 yeah. Huh, huh. Oh, my. And let me tell you, you know, like I've been involved here, you know, since, you know, 1968 in Toronto, when I was the first, you know, Jewish person to speak on behalf of the Palestinians in North America. And at that time, until 1967, the Zionists never talked about the Holocaust. There was never a Holocaust Remembrance Day. There was never a Warsaw Ghetto Uprising commemoration conducted, you know, by any Zionist organization. I and... Uh, 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 Joe Meslin at the uh, worker circle in Toronto at the Parrot School that he was principal of conducted the first commemoration for the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. And then we handed out a leaflet uh, opposing Zionism and then all hell broke loose and he was dismissed from the post of president uh, of the uh, of the Parrot School, the Jewish school, the Yiddish school. And then he had a heart attack and died soon after that. Oh, That's Joe Meslin. May yeah. his memory live forever. This is yeah. what Zionism does. Yep. We only have a minute or so, so please uh, give us a conclusion, and then uh, we can proceed next week. Well, the conclusion is that the slaughter is still going on, has not abated one one minute or one iota. Uh, the world, the West, still supporting the Zionist propaganda and its genocide, despite the speeches from their leaders, they one ceasefire or they are just. Uh, upset about the loss of life, but mm. in, indeed, and behind the scenes, they are still supporting the Zion state. Mm. Uh, United States still uh, on board with the genocide, um, but the resistance still amazes us how resilient and how strong still, even after five months of uh, resistance, I am more optimistic than before, and I think Israel is... Uh, just signed its first uh, its uh, first and last uh, certificate of dismantlement whether within its peacefully or uh, you know by force mm. that's um, it uh, a couple of things uh, Sinwan uh, of Hamas leadership he's called for a march on uh, Al Quds for the beginning of Ramadan on the 10th of uh, yes. March this month yes that's uh that could turn into something really big you know like if uh, oh, I hope you know, so. yep, yep. A mil um, you know imagine a million palestinians marching on al quds you know like how could they stop you know like a million palestinians marching you know i mean it would turn into a massacre but you know like it, it would it wouldn't stop you know it's such a march you know like no i mean they can't stop the history anymore they can't yeah. maybe it could can stand still but it will continue it doesn't go backward yeah and I continue with my work as well. I'm going back to the vigil at the Jewish Community Campus uh, on Sunday, even though there's an injunction now, because on Monday night there was a, a riot that took place there because a couple of uh, soldiers, it was it at the Jewish Community Campus or a synagogue nearby, 
or you know, or both places, you know, they're coming to sell stolen land in Palestine, you know. Yes. <laughs> and it was military coming to do it, you know, as if the military was selling the land, you know. <laughs> it was and, they are. And, and the state, you know, like it's so, you know, like statist that they don't even, you know, give title of land, you know, even to their own citizens. They only rent a piece of land for 99 years. <laughs> it's still in the name the title of the state. All the land is in the name of the state. It's like a worshiping of the state, you know, to the utmost degree I've ever seen in any yeah. in yeah. any country yeah. whatsoever. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It is, indeed. It has to fall. This is, you know, yeah, yeah. for many reasons, it's so illogical, you know, like it cannot, right. it cannot, you know, go against logic, you know, it just, it doesn't work, you know, like for a while, perhaps, but no longer. And this logic is the point of no return. Logic and history works hand in hand. Logic yeah. and history works hand in hand for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Salam.